ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the series which we were talking about a secrets of how to have a successful marriage and we man we man we managed to say a um, couple of hadith previously and we said the way we're going to be doing it is in mentioning narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam extracting benefits from it so the chapter that we were in right now is the hadith al-waridah narrations that have come from the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pertaining to issues that go before aqdun nikah before marriage so last sit I mean in our last session we spoke about uh, istikhara Inshallah ta'ala, today we're going to be speaking about another very important topic that a person uh, needs to understand. It is a big factor that can either contribute to the good of your marriage or even either bring it to destruction. And that is ma ja'a fil muhur. Matters that have come pertaining to dowry. This, as you all would agree, is a very important uh, issue, the issue of dowry. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ala la taghlu sudaq nisa Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, do not go extreme with regards to the diaries of women. Ala la taghlu sudaq nisa'i fa innahu law khada makramatan fi dunya aw taqwa indallahi He says, that if it was a sign of honor and dignity in this world, the, the, the dowry, if it's a sign of dignity or honor in the sight of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, or taqwa indallahi, or a sign of piety before Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, kana awlakum bihi nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the messenger of Allah, has the most befitting in this affair. Salawatullahi wa salam alayhi. Or in other words, he would have done it before you. If it was an issue that would bring you dignity and honor in this world, or it's a sign of pity before Allah wa ta'ala, the Almighty, <coughs> then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have done it before all of you. And he would have preceded you in this. But look what the narration says. مَا أَزْدَقَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمِ إِمْرَأَةً مِنْ نِسَائِهِ إِلَّا أُصْدِقَةِ إِمْرَأَةٌ مِنْ بَنَاتِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ثِنْتَيْ عَشْرَةَ أُوْقِيَ That the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did not give any of his wives and not any of his daughters were given more than 12 أُوْقِيَ 12 ounces. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he did not give any of his wives, nor was any of his daughters, alayhi salatu wasalam, given more than 12 uqiyah. And look what the Prophet said after that. Oh, sorry, what Umar said after that. Because Umar now, his each statement is talking about the waqa and the reality of the messenger. If the issue of dowry is honor and dignity in this world, in this world and if it's something that's going to bring you piety and you're going to gain taqwa from it, then the Prophet Sallallahu he would have preceded you in this. And he would have been the first to do it. He Sallallahu Alaihi never married a woman more than 12 uqiyah. Nor did any of his daughters marry more than 12 uqiyah, 12 ounces. And look what the Prophet said, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu says after that. Umar radiallahu anhu he said, he said, وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيُلْغِي بِصَدَقَةِ مْرَأَتِهِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ لَهَا عَدَاوَةٌ فِي نَفْسِهِ That the Umar radiallahu anhu said, a man may increase the dowry until he feels resentment against her, towards his wife. He's with her and he feels resentment towards her. وَحَتَّى يَقُولَ Until he says to her, 
kulliftu lakum alqa alqirb qirbati he says to her you cost me everything i own you cost me everything which i i own everything i had i gave in your in your way you see wa kuntu ghulaman arabiyan muwalladan falam adri ma ma alqa alqirbati and he goes, I was a man born amongst the Arabs, but I did not know the meaning of Al-Qul uh, Qirbati. So I now got, that was the dowry that they would give to women. I didn't know all of this amount and this, I was a, a young kid. But getting married to you, it brought me into what? Financial, it brought me into a financial deficiency. I'm now married to you, but he has resentment towards her. And this, wallahi, is the reality. And it's the waqi' of many marriages that the people have. The man marries the woman and he doesn't love his wife. He believes, you got married to me for my money. Our love is not genuine. You see? And adawa and enmity enters both of their hearts towards... So he's, he has resentment towards her. He feels like every day he has to work double shifts to pay off the dowry that he got married to her with. You see? Vidalika there's a state hadith also narrated in Sahih al Muslim that a man came to the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni tazawajh fi ma'atan. I married a woman, we know I'm sorry from the women of Ansar. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam he said, Hal nadarta ilayha, did you look at this woman before you married her? Um, did you cast a glance at her? And then the man said, I cast a glance at her. I did. I quickly looked at her. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ala kam How much have you married her on? What was the dowry in which that you were demanded to be to come with?" The man responded by saying, "Ala arba'i awqim. I was told to come with four uqiyah. Thereupon the Messenger ﷺ said to him, "Ala arba'i awqim." Four awqiyya. And then he says, كَأَنَّمَا تَنْحِتُونَ الْفِضَّةَ مِنْ عُرْضٍ هَذَا الْجَبَلِ مَا عِنْدَنَا مَا نُعْطِيكَ وَلَكِنْ عَسَى أَنَّ بَعَثَكَ فِي بَعْثٍ تُصِيبُ مِنْهُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, It seems as if you dug out silver from the side of the mountain. Like, he was trying to say that that this is why you are prepared to pay such a large amount for dowry is because you, this woman, subhanAllah, she's, it's like you took a silver from a mountain, from the edge of a mountain. But the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, we have nothing we, that we can give you to help you in your dowry. We have nothing. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, there's a possibility that we may send you on an expedition. And from this expedition, you may get booty from it. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَقَدْ بَعْثَ إِلَىٰ بَنِي عَبْسٍ ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلِ فِيهِمْ Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an expedition came, and he sent the man off, which he then dispatched, he, the Prophet dispatched him to the people of Bani Abs, and he gained his dowry from them. As we know, that the dowry in Islam, it didn't restrict it. It didn't place an amount to it. And the man and the wife, whatever they agree upon, is what the person has to pay. But what Islam mentions is that the barakah in the dowry is in the fact that it's small, that it's little. And the greatest dowry that a person can ever, ever set was already set. And it was the diary of Umm Sulaim, um, in which he set towards Talha ibn Ubaidillahi. And this was Astabit al Budani, radiallahu ta'ala, ta he said, narrating from Anish ibn Malikin, he said, Khataba Abu Talha to Umm Sulaim. Abu Talha, he married Umm Sulaim. Fakalat, she said to him, Wallahi ma mithluka ya Abu Talha ta yuraddu. You, the likes of you is not rejected. A person like you and your caliber, because Talha ibn Ubaidillah was a noble man, even before Islam. He was a man of, he was a gentleman. 
He was a man of honour and integrity. So she said, a man like you should not be turned down. وَلَكِنَّكَ رَجُلٌ كَافِرٌ But you are a disbeliever. وَأَنَا مُرَأَةٌ مُسْلِمَةٌ And I am a believing woman. I believe in Allah. I believe in the Messenger. I'm a, I'm a woman who holds Islam. And you, you don't. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لِي أَنْ أَتَزَوَّجُكَ And it is not permissible for me to get married to you. This is not something that is allowed for me. وَإِن تُسْلِمْ فَذَاكَ مَهْرِي But if you take Islam and you come into Islam, Allahu Akbar, that's my dowry for you. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكَ غَيْرَهُ And I do not ask you of anything other than that. I don't want anything other than that from you. If you enter Islam, that's my dowry. فَأَسْلَمَ He took Islam, طَلْحَةَ بْنُ أَنْصَارِي Sorry. طَلْحَةَ الْأَنْصَارِي Sorry, this is not طَلْحَةَ بْنُ أَنْصَارِي Sorry, it's طَلْحَةَ الْأَنْصَارِي He took Islam. فَأَسْلَمَ He took Islam. فَكَانَ ذَلِكَ مَهْرَحَ And that became her dowry. ثابت البناري he said فما سمعت بامرأة قط I have never heard of a woman whatsoever كانت أكرم مهرا من أم سليم الإسلام فدخل بها فولدت منه I have never heard of whatsoever a woman whose dowry was more greater from Um Sulaim Islam was her dowry and he entered onto her and she gave birth to a child for him. Lidalika <coughs> Imam al-Nasai rahimahullah ta'ala, because he is the one who brought this, this story in his sunan, he chapter a bab for it and he said, Babu Tazwij al Islam, marrying off or making your marriage condition or your dowry based on Islam. Can a person can a person Make the Qur'an their condition? Can a dowry of a woman be the Qur'an? Can she say, I will marry you based on the Qur'an? Naam, it is permissible. Based on the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he married a man of ma ma'ahu min al-Qur'an, whatever he had from the Qur'an. Whatever he had memorized from the Qur'an, that was the dowry in which he married the woman with. So if the man doesn't have any financial uh, ability, he has got no money, the Qur'an can be a, a dowry for the woman. But it's very strong that we ponder on this particular issue, which is, we're at a time where people have become so uh, materialized. And it's become sad that the woman, her dowry would be something mind cannot comprehend. And it's sad because if this is somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with and you want to spend your time with in this world, would it bring you to pleasure to see him struggle after marrying you to pay off your dowry? Is he not the person who you love and you want to be with? Is he not then, inshallah, going to be the father of your kids? If this is the case, then, and this is what you really genuinely feel, then the meher wouldn't be something very, very high. Because as Umar radiallahu statement mentioned that this increases resentment. That the man later, the, the man later, will feel that this woman has took, took in him uh, for a ride. And it's been, without a shadow of a doubt, it's been seen. That a lot of people whose diaries are so expensive ended up having the hardest marriage there could ever be. Even if they don't go separate ways. Because some sisters would say, the reason why I place my, my, my diary high is so the guy doesn't divorce me. But what benefit does it have if you're living a hard life? If you're forcing him to stay with you by making, making your diary very high. But then you're living a very hard life together, both of you, and you're struggling. What benefit does it have? What value does that have? But you're stressed. You know, he's stressed. He, he has resentment towards you. You're starting to hate him now because of the way he's dealing with you. And that is why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states that the best of diary is that which is little. There's barakah in it. And barakah means blessings. So don't increase. And you have to remember 
the path that our Prophet عليه, treaded on, or the path he treaded on to his, to his own self and for his own daughters, is, is there not a path better than that for you? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, alayhi salatu wa never married a woman more than 12 uqiyah, alayhi salatu wa And his own daughters, who are better than any one of us, <coughs> and his wives are better than us, he didn't marry them off more than 12 uqiyah. <coughs> and a lot of people, this is their argument. They say, our tribe, we don't marry our do if we don't marry our daughters off cheap. Huh? It's more of a dignity issue. And it's more of a it's an honor. Our tribe, our people, this is the way we are, you know. I remember subhanAllah, this is a story. I remember two sisters, the two sisters, one's old and the other's younger. One old, one younger. SubhanAllah. I saw it with my own eyes. Two sisters. <coughs> one sister, the older one, she got married and the dowry, the older one, the dowry of the guy that she got married to was ridiculous. Very expensive. I don't remember right now how much it was, <coughs> but it was something very, very ridiculous. Because remember, within the Somali community, the dowry is always mentioned in the, uh, in the open. Everybody knows. The people who are there can hear what the dowry is. Is it like that in the Asian community? It's said out loud. Huh? Of the nikah when the sheikh is doing it. So the sheikh look good. So that's how it's like in the, in the Somali community. So everybody would know what the dowry is. The girl's dowry. So the oldest sister's dowry was something. At that moment I remember when he, the, the sheikh mentioned it. And the people in the gathering. We all remember we looked. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was mind boggling. We were gobsmacked. Years went by. Or a year went by maybe. And her younger sister got married. Okay? Her younger sister got married. And her younger sister got married with something very, very small. Very small. You see? That also caught some of our attentions as well. How small her dowry was. Something very, very small. Like it was so small. I don't think it would take that man a long time to, to, to pay her. Whatever it was. It was very, very, very small. You see? I remember in the, in the gathering discussion, people started to talk about it. You know, gossiping, people were gossiping about it. The first one, look how honorable she was. Look how, you know, how good she was. Look how, you know, she's her dignity and her honor. You know, and she looked after the reputation of her family. And so the young one was, was rebuked and she was scolded and she was belittled. For Marwat, Sanatim Nesini, years went by. The first one, the first one, her marriage fell apart. The man ended up, you see, giving her the dowry, whatever it was her rights. And her marriage was a chaos. The second one, Walilah Alhamdulillah Minna, is still married, but hasn't gone the separate ways with her husband. I mean, every marriage has ups and downs. But the second one still in her marriage and her husband and her are willing to work on all of the hardship and, and struggles that they are having, they're willing to work on it. Now I'm not saying, and I'm not saying in any way, form or shape, that the reason why the first one's marriage collapsed is because of the dowry. And I'm not saying the second one, the reason why her marriage is still continuously going on is because of the dowry. I'm just saying that the dowry plays a factor. It may not be the main factor. But it's a part of what Allah Taala places. You know, the love becomes genuine. People love each other for who they, who you are. The woman is not going to be a what? What do you say when a woman loves a man for money? What they call it again? Yeah, gold digger. gold digger. That is it. The woman is not a gold digger, and she's not in this marriage for a for something. She's not in this marriage because of the money. That becomes the case, then later what happens, whenever she realizes that he hasn't got the money, he's not making that much money, she's going to be the first to leave him. But what is also not allowed to be done is, brothers, is no one, whoever that person may be, no one is ever allowed to cut down dowry. 
No one's allowed to restrict it. It's something Allah did not restrict. However honorable that person may be, this is something Allah and His Messenger left unrestricted. And it's the rights of the woman to set wherever she wishes as her dowry. It is wherever she wishes to set as her dowry. And that is what the dowry is going to be. If they both agree upon it, he has to pay that dowry. And no one can say, how dare you set that dowry. But what we're coming from is the angle of, this is what's most virtuous. This is what's going to make your marriage last more. And this is from the secrets that give you a successful marriage. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop at this particular hadith for today's session, inshallah ta'ala. Um, anything which I have said that was wrong, for inna minni wa min ash-shaytani wa Allah wa rasulu bari alimim. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.